Hi, I'm Bruce Brannett. Um, I am going to show you a little demo of some of the things that I've figured out and learned about prepping an object for 3D printing. Um, I'm going to be using LightWave, but a lot of this uh, works for pretty much anything. Some programs, I think, kind of do it a little more for you, but uh, this is some things I've kind of figured out that make it a little easier. So I saw this this week. Um, cool little C-3PO Buddhas. Um, these particular ones are from someone named uh, Chris Milnes. Uh, he's got an Etsy page, Mucky Chris, right there, and he's selling these really cheap. There's a whole bunch of them with Iron Man heads and Batman heads and stuff like that, and they're pretty cheap, so I'd check it out. But uh, so I lo this this looked like a good thing that I could kind of run through some of the steps and problems with making a 3D printable legal object where I could take two objects and boolean them together, which causes all sorts of problems. So I figured I would do. I found this model. And uh, I got this off of uh, GrabCAD, uh, super high resolution. I've reduced it just a little bit. And then I'm going to do Admiral Akbar Buddha. That's going to be kind of fun. So what I want to do is glue these together and make sure that it's still legal to print. So, so what is legal to print? Um, to kind of get to that, we need to understand a term called manifold edges. Okay, so we got a ball. Is that legal? Yes, that's legal to print. Um, let's do a little box with some corners on it. So is that legal to print? Yes, that's legal to print. So is this legal to print? Absolutely not. And what's the difference? The problem is this object now has something called non-manifold edges. Um, we've all heard the term watertight and that's especially true when 3D printing. So if something has non-manifold edges, a good way in LightWave to find that out is to go to edge mode, uh, do edge statistics, and right there, any edge that is part of only one polygon is immediately unprintable on a 3D printer. So if I check that, select that, there we go. All those there are non-manifold edges. They will not print. Um, if we go inside, you'll see there is no inside. So the printer does not know what to make of that. Uh, one quick way we could get rid of that, if uh, if we needed to fill it, would be just to go to point mode. Let's select our points. We'll make sure we're not grabbing anything in the background. And just make a polygon and triple it. So very quickly, that is now. If we go to point statistics, we have zero one point ed edge polys. Edge is part of one poly, and we have zero edge is part of more than one poly, which is also a problem. You want all of them to be that. All of them to be part of two polys. Any edge you can select should always be part of two and only two polys, uh, which is a quick, quick shorthand of making sure that your object is a non-manifold object, or a manifold object, water type. So, so let's talk about booleaning. So, I've got two objects here that are now overlapping each other. Is that a printable object? Uh, the answer to that is actually kind of yes and no. Um, my printer, I use in Affinia, uh, actually will print this. Uh, but you don't want to print it that way because let me show you what you'll get. If you Boolean these, well, if you just overlap them and print them as that, as overlapping geometry, it's a pretty big no-no. Um, what you will get if you just print that is something basically like that which looks good initially and and may print it may not print but ultimately what you'll have is something that essentially looks like that where it will print them together but there will be an, a negative zero winding space inside and your model will fall apart or you'll have to reglue it so what we want to do is we want to make a clean perfect Boolean. So to do that, I'll give you a quick run through of just how I would boolean these two shapes together. Uh, let's take one in the background, one in the foreground, do a boolean. Oh, sorry. Union. Now we have this object. I will merge polygons because LightWave's boolean does not merge the shapes together once uh, they are booleaned, and triple it. And let's check our edge mode. We have a couple of extra 
um, edges here that are part of more than one poly. So very quickly I want to check my polys and I'll see I've got a bunch of two-point polys. That's also a problem. So I select that. Two-point polys, one-point polys, you're almost always able to just immediately delete. We go now again. Now we have only edges that are part of two polys. And this, I would say, is going to be a safe object to print. Another quick check that's sometimes helpful, especially when trying to find loose polys on the inside that might be floating inside your geometry, is to do a quick flip. Let's turn off that and look, through, look at things through the inside. Flip your object inside out and just see if it kind of makes sense. Um, see if you're looking at the inside topology of your shape and make sure there's nothing floating in there. Uh, typically if you have checked your edge statistics and you have only two point uh, poly edges that are part of two polys, generally you're safe. So let's delete all this and let's get to work on Buddha Akbar. So I've already kind of poly reduced these a little bit uh, just because the actual models uh, were incredibly dense. Uh, if I didn't say before, this Akbar object I found on Thingverse, a uh, user named Iron Fence made it. It's actually pretty, pretty good. Uh, real quickly, as I look at this, there's one thing I want to do. I notice when we print this, his eyes are just balls. I'd like to make them have pupils in them. So I am going to. So that's my new pupil. I'm just going to kind of inset that a little bit. So I'll just do a extender. I will and size it inward on the center axis. A little bit like that. Move it back here a little bit. Uh, I think I've gone a teeny bit too far. So I'll go back to that size and just cut it about in half of what I did. 256. And then move it back. All right, that works. I think that'll be that'll work. Okay, so something I should have done earlier. I'm just going to double check and make sure both of these are legal objects. Uh, edge statistics, all edges with two polys. Great. And I'll do a quick flip inside out. Make sure there's nothing hiding in here. No, there's some very thin overlaps, which could cause me a little bit of problems, but I think it'll be okay. And let's check the Buddha. All two-point polys, beautiful. Flip him inside out. And he looks pretty great. This is a really high-res model. So, right off the bat, we're in pretty good shape here with these two heads. Um, Going to select this guy. Put him a little into position. That is great. So I'm going to kind of mush this guy around. Before I do that, I'm going to... Oops. Turn off my show polygon so I can see what I'm doing in this window just a little bit better. Um, I got to say, that fit is pretty good. I love the way, actually, I was going to go in and mess with all this other stuff, but... The way the Buddha's ears kind of hang off of Akbar is really cool, so I'm going to keep that. And I'm going to just kind of move him around a little bit. Let's move him just a little bit back. Awesome. Okay, so this is probably going to give me a lot of trouble when I try and boolean it, but a little bit of his back of the bust of Akbar is right there. I'm just going to take the magnet tool and just kind of shove that into the geometry to try and boolean it away. All right, here we go. 
shove it inside. How perfect is that? Okay. So instead, now I'm going to take the Buddha and kind of push him out of the way. Aim it right here. There we go. Let's park that magnet somewhere right over his face. There we go. And just in case we got the same stuff happening over here. Let's see. We'll shove. Beautiful. So let me check this and let's call him Ack and make him a little bit darker. Just to kind of see what's going on here. Okay. This is going to be great. Well, I think we should just see what happens. I'm going to copy Akbar over here. We'll go into the background here and let's just see how messy this is with a Boolean union. And sit back and wait. And there we have it. Okay, so here is our Akbar. Let's hide this. Uh, generally, it looks pretty good. Let's, right off the bat, let's merge points and triple the remaining. So if we look at our texture, we'll see what we have here. So what I'm going to do is try and find all of the non-manifold edges on this. And again, I go to my edge mode, bring this up, and you can see I've got 16 non-manifold edges. So as it is, this will not print. Uh, I'm going to select those edges and let's see if we can find them. You can see the little green lines up in here. Um, I'm going to zoom in on one at a time just to see if we can see what we've got going on here. So inside his mouth here, this is pretty common, we've got what looks to be eight edges. Uh, in between these is probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that tells me um, that these points are not properly welded and if I were to come in here and drag yep that's exactly what we've got there you can see the four edges one two three four loop and one two three four so quick and dirty fix select your points you get two points right there weld select these points over here just to make sure we got them there's two right there and well, now you go back to edge and guess what? When those edges are welded back together, they are no longer the same edges, so they don't show up anymore, which is actually a really nice way if you select all of your uh, non-manifold edges. Here we have four. Um, if I switch to point mode, select those two points right there, weld them, go back to edge mode, you see now I no longer have any suggest selected, tells me that I've eliminated those and now I only have four left. Select those, come into here, uh, my guess is one, somewhere along these edges are points that are badly overlapped. So if I select those, I got two. You want to make sure you don't accidentally select something on the opposite side of your mesh. So after welding, it's always a good job to kind of peek inside and look around and make sure you don't have shoot points just shooting off into space. Uh, so edge mode, edge mode, and we have all edges with two polys. This is now a manifold object and is safe to print. So I'm going to take this. One thing that I've found is a good idea before exporting as an STL file is to center your object. Just center it. Uh, I've had problems exporting proper STLs where the center point wasn't inside of a part of the geometry where it was somehow floating off into space. I don't know why that is and I'm not certain that that's not just uh, voodoo, but uh, it's become a habit for me to make sure that 
my object is in fact centered over the zero point somewhere inside the geometry if at all possible. Um, let me check my scale. So I think I want this thing to be about five inches tall. Let's okay. So let's go to the measure tool. Let's just see what we got here. Uh, 160 millimeters. That's not bad. 16 centimeters tall. Uh, that's pretty close. Um, I think I'm just going to leave it at that scale. And if I need to modify the scale at all, I can do that in the the uh, printer. So um, I'm going to copy and paste this into a new document. So it's in my zero layer. You don't have to do this. Again, it's something that I've had better luck with. Uh, under File, um, Export as STL, Triangulate Polys. Well, that would have been a good idea. I'm going to Triangulate Polys. Once again, check, make sure all of my edge statistics show edges with two polys only. Once again, try and export STL. There we go. No problems found. This is actually a pretty good indicator here. It's uh, uh, a lot of times you don't believe what Lightwave tells you, but in this case, it's generally pretty well right. If you've properly done all the steps of removing any non-manifold edges, any overlapped ununified geometry, um, anything that's not tripled, this will generally be a, if this window pops up, you can consider yourself in pretty good shape. So settings for this, leave that on binary. Um, Z is actually the Y mode for most printers, so even though the up axis in Lightwave and many programs is Y, Z is your proper orientation. If you get that wrong, you can always reorient in the printer. Positive quadrant, uh, take your units here down to millimeters and hit OK. Um, let's give it a save path. Buddha Akbar STL. We will save that. And let's go see if we can get it into our 3D print program. So uh, the 3D print uh, slicing program I use comes from Affinia. It comes with the uh, printer. Um, I really kind of like it. it uh, it's simple. gets things done. And I know there's a lot of other things like NetFab, um, uh, some other programs like XNormal that you can maybe use to help clean up geometry. Um, I did this in the 3D package that I know, which is Lightwave. Um, the other programs work great. A uh, little bit of a learning curve where if you're a 3D artist, you may want to use the tools uh, that you're used to. I'm going to bring in my uh, Buddha Akbar, Budak Bar, let's call him. And perfect. A little larger than I thought he was going to be, but he looks good. Uh, let's maybe reduce him down just a little bit. Let's, uh, let's try like. 0.75, hit scale and place, and I think he is going to be about ready to print. Um, I say we send him off to the printer and see what happens. Okay, so here is our model. Uh, turned out really good. There is a bit of too thin um, of a surface around the eyelids, but other than that, nothing that can't be patched. Other than that, it looks pretty good. It held the detail. All this little embossed detail is great. So, all in all, a success. If uh, you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, uh, thank you for watching.